OpenAI has launched a crazy new model O1, which could be the strawberry that everybody was rumoring about. This is a new model that they claim to have internal reasoning. We'll see about this internal reasoning and they've also given a bunch of examples and we're going to see all those examples in this video. This video is going to be my first video in this new model called OpenAI O1. They've completely created a new family of model which they call as a model that has been trained with reinforcement learning. Now you might ask, hey, didn't they already train a model with RLHF, reinforcement learning with human feedback? But that's a totally different philosophical conversation because a lot of people claimed, including Jan Likon, that the RLHF trained LLMs are not reinforcement learning based models. So according to OpenAI, this is a model that has been trained with reinforcement learning to perform complex reasoning. Also, one thing that you should keep in mind at this point is while you are uh, embracing the hype that you have got at this point, this is not a drop in replacement for GPT-44 for all the use cases. You would still need a model like GPT-40 and GPT-40 mini, but this model has got its own place in the family of models, especially when you are interested in reasoning. And it's very interesting to see the way they are approaching this. We do not have a technical paper yet, but when we have a technical paper, or if <laughs> they share the technical paper, we'll have more information about it. But this follows the same pattern about creating internal chain of thought and then using that as an answer to give it to the user. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go step by step. What is this new model? This new model is called OpenAI O1. They've got two variants of this model. The one variant that they've got is O1 Preview. The second variant that they've got is O1 Mini. O1 Mini is ideally supposed to be faster, cheaper, and O1 Preview is the early preview of O1, and O1 is not launched yet. So the O1 Preview is going to be the best model at this point in terms of reasoning, or in this family of O1. Now, why is it better, or why is it special? O1, OpenAI, I don't even know how are they going to pronounce it. O1, Oven, O1, I don't know, something. There is a letter O and number one, maybe like one little coder one, I don't know. O1 ranks in the 89th percentile on competitive programming questions, code forces. So if you're if you're a programmer uh, used to competitive programming, this is at the 89th percentile. If you are at the 89th percentile in competitive programming questions on code forces, by this time you'll have a job in Fang. So probably O1 has got a job in Fang. It also places among top 500 students in the US in a qualifier for USA Math Olympiad. It exceeds human PhD level accuracy on a benchmark of physics, biology, chemistry problem, which is GPQA benchmark. While the work needed to make this new model as easy as current model still going on, because you would, you would know why that is the case. O1 preview for immediate use in ChatGPT and also trusted API users. So not sure what does it mean? So the large scale reinforcement learning algorithm teaches the model how to think productively using its chain of thought in a highly data efficient training process. This is something that OpenAI has been trying out. Like we have seen a couple of use cases, papers, blog posts in the past, where rather than training the model with the question and answer, they were training the model with the steps to make the model think or to make the model learn to think. I mean, it's not exactly like how humans think, think, but it is a way for the model to arrive at an answer rather than actually training the model with an answer. Now, you might feel that this is almost as same as the recently touted scammy model reflection. See, I would like to again point out that reflection model, even though the model is new, it's not an entirely new idea. And I've got a couple of videos on the same topic about how to make the model think before it answers. And we have seen time and time again that that improves the accuracy of the model. But what OpenAI has done specially is that they are doing this reinforcement learning approach with the special tokens to make the model think. And you can see here. So there is a train time compute log skill, and this is the accuracy. And you can see that the accuracy of O1 AIME, I think this is a math Olympiad. I don't know why is it called AIME. I thought AIME is like a AI math Olympiad anyways. They say that this is the USA Math Olympiad. And you can see that the accuracy increases with the train time compute. So the constraints on scaling this approach differ substantially from those of LLM pre-training. And we are continuing to investigate. Why? Because they are spending time during inference, not just time during training. And these are two different things. 
for those who are completely new a model that is being trained to think during the training phase is also going to think during the inference phase training phase is one time effort you build the model and the inference phase is every time you hit the api the model has to think let me make it easier for you by going to an example already so we're going to see an example here and the example is the user has given this and then said think step by step so the user has said this means think step by step and then i already will the answer so we have seen it then they said use the above example to decode so the user has sent this to gpt40 and this is what they have given this is a very classical uh, problem if you if you have studied encryption and all those things people would give this kind of problem they would say that okay this, you have to find the key once you find the key and the encryption method you would know how to decode this very classical problem uh, i think humans have been using this since world war 1 or world war 2 and here is the answer so gpt4 has tried to do the answering and it could not do anything at all because finally it came up with something rubbish gibberish now the o1 preview model has taken the same input and it is trying to decode so in the process of decoding it it first figures out that this is a cipher text it is decoding the cipher text as think step by step how this is the decoding method so it is trying to convert the uh, letter into a numerical position and a bunch of things and then applying the new method into this particular new text that they have given the final answer here is that finally it's going to be revealed as strawberry the decoded word is strawberry so the final decoded message here is that there are three r's in strawberry this is probably open ai trolling the entire internet and the universe at this point now how is this happening this is happening through internal or private chain of thought the chain of thought is what is happening at the inference time and it is not technically revealed to the user but we'll see later on that open ai has said that that chain of thought is also going to be uh, built to the user okay anyways what's going on here so the chain of thought says okay first what is going on here we are given first an example and this is all going on within the model so this is what they mean that the L the llms are thinking before they are answering our task is to use the above example to decode this there is one observation then it is doing something then it is thinking step by step then it is doing something and it is going through this process typically if you have hired a kid and ask the kid to solve a one specific problem by giving a certain framework or rule this is what the kid would do and the o1 model does exactly the same and then finally are able to better answer they've got multiple more examples like in coding in math so for example if you take the coding example so you've got a question that says write a bash script that takes a matrix represented as a string format it's a matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it's a it's technically a 3 by 2 matrix prints the transpose in the same format and as you can see here open ai's gpt40 model ends up writing a code here and then it gives you an answer and it's a wrong answer so it it didn't give you the right answer because the transpose did not happen properly and if you see here the i mean if you see here it is giving the answer i don't know why there uh, this should have been the expected output is this but it did not give the right transpose i thought the transpose is like a simple problem i'm not sure but this model the o1 model gives you the right answer because the transpose is uh, just transpose like from a 3 by 2 matrix you have got a 2 by 3 matrix because it's transposed and this is all happening because of this same internal chain of thought or what they call as a pri private chain of thought or indeed they are calling it as thinking uh, i mean they are going to raise a lot of fund so making a model say that it is thinking is going to help them a lot of uh, raise a lot of fund it's got excellent evils like for example this model is out of box in the world and uh, for example the competition math gpt4 was 13.4 and o1 is 83 one of the strangest thing about all these charts is that they did not compare this model with any other competition they didn't compare it with cloud 3.5 sonnet they did not compare this with gemini 1.5 pro the experimental version of gemini 1.5 pro which google announced they claim that it's almost like very apple esque they claim to say that they are better than the previous model like four times better than previous model five times better than previous model but they did not make any comparison with any competition i think just because they're too confident that this is a new paradigm in my opinion i don't i mean in my humble opinion i don't think this is this is there in the research it's just that people have not been productionizing it and open ai has figured out a way to do it data efficiently that's what they said only one place where they have actually used a human baseline is a phd level question and 
uh, this is GPQA and human expert that they're saying is 69.7 while uh, O1 preview is 78.3 and uh, I don't know why O1 is lesser than O1 preview that is another interesting aspect so technically O1 is supposed to be better than O1 preview but O1 preview in this case is better than that and in a lot of other benchmarks this model is completely crushing GPT-40 this is like the next level insane and like I said, like it's going to have bottlenecks in terms of inference speed and all the other things. I think OpenAI is going to work on that. And the whole concept is called the hidden chain of thought. So they're hiding chain of thought. So we believe that a hidden chain of thought presents a unique opportunity for monitoring model. Assuming it is faithful and legible, the hidden chain of thought allows us to read the mind of the model and understands its thought process. I mean, they are going to get a lot of PR because a model can think uh, this is going to be picked up by every um, media. But again, I believe that this is not something radical. We have had chain of thought. We have had explicit chain of thought. We have had models fine tuned with chain of thought data. Uh, we have been discussing about reflection 70 billion parameter model recently. This is there. What OpenAI could have done is that they could have done it more efficiently. They could have uh, figured out to productionize it. So. It is not like exactly your understanding how the model is thinking. You're not going inside the deep neural network that is making a prediction that is still a kind of black box until unless you understand the neural activation and all those things. But predominantly you get to understand how the model is approaching this problem. If that is thinking, maybe this is thinking. For example, in the future, we may wish to monitor the chain of thought for signs of manipulating the user. Again, this is far fetched at this point. I'm not thinking that AI is going to eat up humanity, but that's what OpenAI is saying that it will help them monitor it. However, for this work, the model must have the freedom to express its thoughts. This wording is um, too much like a science fiction movie. So we cannot train a, any policy compliance or user preference onto the chain of thought. We also do not want to make an unaligned chain of thought directly visible to users. So they're going to hide it and then do something. So anyways, uh, the, it's a very typical OpenAI in this particular case. Now moving on to what the model is, uh, how it is working. So they've got this some more details in the, the actual uh, API platform. Another important thing, like I said, this, this is mo not a model that you should be using in all the cases. For example, you've got a uh, different modality like images, uh, text, uh, sorry, other than text audio, then you shouldn't use the model. And there are certain cases where this model is not even good. For example, human preferences of domain, O1 preview as a GPT-40. For personal writing, this model is not good. For editing text, this model is not better. But this model is actually good in computer programming, data analysis, mathematical calculation. So you have to use your discretion to see where do you want to use this model and where do you not want to use this model. The baseline is wherever you think that there is a multi-step reasoning involved, this model tend to be or technically should be better than the existing one. Also, I think in terms of latency, you might have to make the call to understand uh, whether this model is what you want to use. So in terms of uh, the model reasoning, how it is happening, the reasoning is happening like this. So the model actually generates, if you give the input, it generates the reasoning and it generates output. Then there is a next turn, like I said, multi-turn. There's a next turn happening where the input and output goes into the input. And then there is new reasoning and then there is output. Then again, there is an input and then output going into the input, reasoning happening output. And finally, when the context window is like 128,000, the model actually outputs the truncated output in this particular case, uh, I mean, it is cut off at 128,000 context window. So finally, you get only the output uh, where it uh, strips off all the special tokens. So technically, what is happening is there are special tokens involved in this model prediction. This is again, very similar, like what has been happening with the reflection. I mean, it's strange that this model has come out at this particular point when uh, reflection was like uh, panned across everybody. Uh, reflect, like I said, like the principles of reflection has been good. We have seen multiple papers. I'll link a couple of my previous videos on that about how reasoning or thinking before it does something. And, uh, this model is a testament that that is a concept that we should be ideally moving forward to. But the question is, is it thinking or is it just chain of thought fine tuning? That's a totally different conversation to have. So how the reasoning works over model introduces reasoning thoughts. The models use the reasoning tokens to think breaking down their understanding of the prompt and considering multiple approaches to generate a response. These are the multiple approaches. Here is an example of a multiple multi-step conversation between a user and assistant input and output tokens from each step are carried over while the reasoning tokens are discarded because you don't want the same reasoning there. So imagine like 
I don't know how many of you have built ensemble models in machine learning. If you have ever built ensemble models in machine learning, especially if you are going to use majority voting, you want these models to have different principles when they're going to generate the output. Otherwise, you will be like carrying over the same noise. So you you want to have it uh, different reasoning, and that's exactly what OpenAI is doing here. The one um, caveat here is that the reasoning tokens are not visible, but they're going to be built. So you're going to be built for that. O1 preview comes with uh, 32,000 uh, tokens context window. O1 mini comes up with uh, 65,000 tokens context window, and it is available for uh, the certain trusted users to use today. So you, all you have to do is uh, in the model, you just have to use O1 preview, and um, yeah, so it's going to do everything for you, and then you're going to get the standard uh, parameters like uh, temperature and all the things are available, but uh, they're going to fix it to zero, just like it is something that OpenAI is doing. It's not going to have uh, things like function calling or um, other uh, formats. Uh, streaming is not going to be supported. That means you're not going to get the internal chain of thought while the model is predicting. You're going to get it only after it is done. So here is an example, the coding refactoring. So this is the system prompt they have given here. So the system prompt is instructions given the React component below, change it to nonfiction books have read text, something, something and then they're giving the text. So you've got a bunch of examples here when you can use reasoning for a data validation, a routine generation, a coding and planning, STEM research and all those things. We'll do more research on this, but for now, I think this is a great step because the industry um, tends to follow what OpenAI is doing and uh, they've thrown re uh, reinforcement learning here. I would love to see if there is a technical paper somewhere here, but this is technically, in my opinion, like chain of thought, and uh, they have trained it with chain of thought. They are doing chain of thought in a more uh, leg more decent manner, I would say, and also more efficient manner during inference. And that is making this model much more efficient. So it's almost like uh, if you have seen uh, the AMO, the, the interview that I did with the AMO second prize winner, they were actually making the model come up with multiple answers using the majority voting. This is not exactly like parallel answers and majority voting. This is like more sequential process with chain of thought happening at the inference speed. I think this is a great step up and uh, I would love to see more around the technical details. But the fact that OpenAI has re finally acknowledged that this works, I guess like everybody in the industry is going to follow this. But I guess probably Claude 3.5 Sonnet and uh, GP, uh, sorry, Gemini 1.5 Pro could be configured to do certain things like this. I'd love to see the benchmark comparison to see where those companies stand with the existing model rather than having a new, completely new, let's say chain of thought uh, reasoning, trained reinforcement learning model and see what is happening. Anyways, I did not believe that strawberry is going to be real, but here is strawberry for you. Did you like it? Let me know in the comment section.